welcome to this week's Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. I'm Geraldine Cannan and delighted to be joined by Michael Ferencombe, Tipperary Minor Camogie Manager. Michael, thanks very much for joining us on the Camogie Report. You're welcome, Geraldine. Great to be with you. Um, first of all, just to acknowledge, uh, we got a great response to our, our last podcast uh, where we announced Team of the Year uh, with Bill Milani. We had... 1200 views altogether so absolutely brilliant response so no pressure now michael but uh, you have to follow up that one and um since then as well we've also hit the thousand mark of subscribers on our youtube channel so thanks to everybody that has subscribed to our youtube channel and don't forget if you haven't subscribed yet you can still subscribe just click that button um michael we're i know you're just in from training um big match at the weekend on sunday away to kilmalik first round the all iron championship how's preparations going yeah, they're going fine. Um, I suppose we're uh, we're not together as long as we'd like to be. To be honest with you, um, you know, the, I suppose the uncertainty of when the All Ireland Championship is being played was played a big factor in that. Um, normally, the All Ireland Championship is played in uh, post leaving cert, um, but this year um, it's 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 brought forward and the championship is on next Sunday. First round is next Sunday, so we're only together since December. But we have a good group of girls. We're Quite happy with the, with the way they're progressing. They're all working hard and training hard. So we're looking forward to Sunday. We're playing Limerick in, in Kilmallock at half two. So a big game for us. First round of the All-Ireland Championship. And uh, that follows on the following Sunday. And two weeks later in for a, a way to Antrim. So we've um, we've a tough group and we've, we've a big challenge ahead of us. But we're looking forward to it. And when you say you got together since December, would you have had trials or just... Co- Call players in or play challenge matches or what has been what has been the setup like? Well, it's been difficult enough. Like I, I, I would I would I would ideally have liked to have maybe 50, 60, 70 girls in because it was like I've I've been around to a lot of the minor games over the last number of weeks in the different championships and uh, and there's some great um great girls out there and, and great competition for places. Um we did we had to bring, um, you know, 50, 60 girls for trials, simply because of the time, you know, from the time we, we got together for the, the the first time, you know, the first the first time we got together this year was on the 18th of December, you know, so, um, and then we picked a panel of about 40 girls, um, we had a few more on top of that that uh, looked at it as well. We went into a few club games and uh, we're now down to 30. Um, but we, 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 we had 30, we've, we're down to 30 girls now and, um, you know, we're, we're happy with the panel that we have. Brilliant. Yeah, like your panel was announced last week and um, I suppose one thing that stood out for me firstly was um, how many names I recognise. You know, I wouldn't be overly familiar going to under 16 or minor games bar my own club was playing but I recognize a lot of names because from the adult games you know a lot of girls playing with their with their adult team with whether it be intermediate senior or minor or junior you know Boerland girls um Cashel girls um Shannon Rover girls and I don't know I couldn't believe that they were all just still minor because I was used to seeing them playing during the year and being key players on their on their club teams and I don't uh, feeling older. What it is, I, I was so surprised that some of them are still only minor, and I suppose that's that's a sign of how good they are when they're playing w- with their adult teams. You know, on on, on Starm for casual senior teams and so on, so forth. Of course, yeah, no, certainly, and and it was great, and 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 like a lot of the girls on this um, panel now at the moment have played either junior, intermediate, or senior with their clubs this year, be it in challenges, league games, or championship, and some of them have played in championship games. And they've all performed really well, and yeah. they're really going to step up into the in, into the senior ranks in the com- in the coming years. Um, so they're you know we've a good a good group of girls there. Um, as I said, ideally I'd like to have had a lot more time with them. Um, you know it's it's difficult to prepare a team in a month uh, for championship, but at the same time they, they are working really really hard for us. And um, there's a good spread of girls there. We've 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 a lot of clubs, and um, they're you know they're they're. They're accredited to their clubs, every one of them. Yeah, just another thing that caught my eye, I suppose, is we had uh, Cashel were five players, Shannon Rovers were five, and Anna Carty were four. And, you know, it's quite a lot of players from, from 
from three clubs and but I think yeah. that's a sign of how strong them three clubs have been at minor and under 16 grade and I suppose the great work that's gone on in those clubs yeah it has and and you know I wouldn't I wouldn't under I wouldn't underestimate the other clubs as well because I think that those three clubs are fantastic and you can see the girls that we have on the panel now are playing A and B level you know they're, 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 the, the competition was very severe in the B competition um, as as you know, the the Ashel and Carty final was a was a very very high quality game in, in the A final, and um, the re- there was just super work going on there. Um, and some of the other clubs, even I've gone to see some of the games that you know, see championship and see Lee is the see Shield games, and quality in those games as well was excellent. And it's just some of those clubs are probably short on numbers, um, and and there's some fantastic players, but maybe short on numbers in rural clubs and so on to to maybe compete at, uh, at A and B level, but they're still putting in great work in every club across the county. And I think Camogie has really grown across the county and I'm delighted to be part of it because it's, 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 it's a big aim for us this year is, you know, if we, if we have success this year, it's fantastic. But if we can develop these girls and progress them into the junior and senior ranks over the next couple of years, I think that will be a big bonus for us, you know. Very good. Just talking there, you mentioned, you know, you think Camogie's improved and, and the standard has risen. I suppose um, I don't know the name Ferncombe as, as Holy Cross, but you're you're obviously, li- you're originally from Holy Cross, but you're you're living in Clonanty, your family in Clonanty, is that, and then your own daughter, Kate, is on the panel, is that how you would have got involved firstly with Camogie? Yeah, it is. Look, I'm 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 a Holy Cross Belly Cattle man. Yeah, I'm living in Rossmore now for over 21 years. So I'm I'm uh, all the kids and we're highly involved in the Clonty Rossmore club here, and uh, I've two daughters playing uh, Camogie uh, at the moment. And um, look, anything we can do to develop your own in 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 sport, you'll you'll try and do it. And you know the 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 encouragement that you can give them is great. But I think you know look at the the honesty and the effort and the work rate. That you get from girls on a camogie field is second to none. You know they're 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 fantastic to work for. They give you every they give you great encouragement every time you go out there um, because of the effort and 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 uh, the interest that they have. They're so honest and it's you know it's it's anything you can give back to to the girls to help them improve. We'd be delighted to do it. You know. Yeah, and um, Dinny is your brother. Uh, people might know Dinny. He's the a coach with the management team with the tip senior camogie team and right. obviously you yep. played uh for holy cross valley cal too you were a goalkeeper and i know you played with tipperary as well so where did the obviously lifelong interest there in ga but w- were you always interested in the coaching side of things or have you, did you get involved with other teams in the previously uh, or yeah look or- I, I i over the last 10 or 11 years i've been involved in coaching clubs um and i suppose it was by, it was all by accident that I got involved at that level because um, I would have always been involved when, when I was hurling senior with Holy Cross. I would have been involved with juvenile teams and Holy Cross helping out, as you do at senior level. And I think it's a big thing for every club to get their senior players involved with their juvenile players, be it Camogie or senior or hurling. Um, because I think it really, it's it's what it's where youngsters look up. They look up to their senior hurlers. Um, so that's where I would have started. But I think um, getting involved with teams was more of an accident. I tore my cruciate. And the next best thing for me uh, when I wasn't able to hurl was to be on the sideline. And I, I, you know, I had too much interest in it to be walking away from it. So I got involved with the Holy Cross seniors as a state and just got in, got involved in doing a little bit of coaching and just kind of took it on by there, really. Took it on from there, really. But I'm, look, I'm enjoying it. And, and um, when, you, when you can't play, it's nice to be on the sideline, being able to do something, you know. Very good. Um, I know... Um... Dave Maloney is selector with you, as is um, Tim Heffernan, and the three of you have daughters on the panel. And I thought it was interesting that Eve Malachny from Shannon Rovers is also selector with you. And I, you know, I just think, was thinking there how Eva would have played down through the years. You know, she's actually still is playing with Tipperary on the Tipperary Junior panel and with Shannon Rovers. But she, her father, Pat, would have often been the manager of those teams. He was involved with Shannon Rovers this year. I'm sure he was involved over tip teams when Aoife was playing. So can Aoife give you a bit of advice about having, you know, um, children on the team? And I know people often say, often parents are nearly harder on their own because they're trying so hard not to favour them. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think I think the three of us look. I'm very lucky with the backroom team I have. You know, David has great experience with all the girls in Cashel and 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 through the A competitions. Tim, the very same with Anna Carty, and you know the two lads are fantastic. And then Aoife, obviously, Pat, um, her father being like from obviously from Pat and from herself and her playing days with with, with uh, Tipperary as well, and and are continuing to play with Tipperary. So um, we're very lucky with the backroom team or with the management team, should I say, that we have. And um, we're 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 delighted with it because and and yeah yeah going back to the three of us have the three of us have girls on it and probably um probably harder on them than we would be on anybody else. Look, we we're still trying to be as honest and as bored with, with it when it comes to our decisions, you know. Of course, um, just a just been great success, I suppose, at schools levels with Tipperary schools, um. I suppose no more so than uh, Cashel Community School winning the Senior A Munster final. And I know they have their All Ireland semi final uh, uh, on Saturday, the day before your match. Um, it's not ideal, really. I know it's great that they're going so well and that they're winning, but I'm sure obviously they're not in with G the whole time. But to have the match the day before and have girls involved the day before, I suppose that's something you would have preferred not to happen. Oh, certainly. And look, this is probably a criticism that I would have over, over the whole fixtures of this competition from Crow Park. And, you know, I have to be honest about it, like, it wasn't taught through properly. You know, um, have to have girls play in schools in their, in, you know, in, 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 in the most the most important part of the season for them. The work that the schools are doing at the moment is unbelievable. You know, it's, it's, it's coming across from... from, from primary schools up to secondary schools, they've a, they've a hurt in their hand every day at school. It's fantastic. And I really compliment the schools and what they're doing. And it's very difficult on the schools, you know, that, you know, we're pulling out of them once or three times and the schools are trying to prepare them. And like we have a few schools involved. Um, presentation presentation in 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 uh, Thurles, they just won a Munster final last weekend, which was a week before. So they they have a, they have another final coming up. The Ursuline and Thurles won a Munster final uh, a couple of weeks ago, and next Saturday they're in Bel Saturday week they're in Belfast yeah. playing Antrim, uh, the Antrim champions well, before be before we play Wexford. Round, yeah. yeah, and then and then you also have the Cashel have with five girls uh, and involved in the game on Saturday. Um, they're playing at half one on Saturday in an All Ireland semi final and turn around and play again on Sunday. Um, but we also have a football get monster final on on, on Saturday where Care are playing, and we have two girls involved in that, and and they're playing they're playing Saturday, and we have to play Sunday against Limerick. So it's it's far from ideal. Look, we just have to work with, we, we can't be making excuses now at this stage. We just have to get on with it, you know. Okay, and you mentioned earlier on, so you're playing Limerick on Sunday in Kilmallock, Kilmallock at two thirty p.m. And um, you have Wexford and Antrim. And um, what do you know much about? The the three counties, I suppose, in your group. We've been about them, yeah. Um, there's a lot of work going on in Limerick at the moment. Um, same as we played Waterford in the Challenge last Sunday evening, and there's a huge amount of work going on in those counties. Um, they're trying to develop the girls. Um, we haven't played Limerick. Uh, we played Limerick B tip in the minor championship in the Munster minor championship last year. Um, so we don't know an awful lot about them. Only there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Do know that Wexford are very physical and uh, they're they're a strong side. Um, and Antrim again, we're going to the unknown, going to going to Belfast in in four weeks' time. Um, but I'm sure we'll we'll fight those two teams over next weekend. They're also playing in Abbottstown in Dublin. And hopefully, we'll get some some um, feedback from those from that game. But, oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. The tight group, like you know. And it's just finally, Michael. Um, is there a certain style of play that you like to, you know, to aim for with your teams or kind of sort of characteristics that you'd be looking for from your players or, you know, is there a yeah, style look, of play you try and follow? Different conditions probably look for different, different, uh, you know, areas of, of focus on the team, really. And I think when you're playing pitch up in February, you, you're, 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 you sticky conditions, um, your work rate and your intensity is is something that 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 has to be at a, a high level. You know, you have to have girls that are willing to work really hard. You know, um, the 
the ball is sticking a lot. Your your, your physicality is a big thing, um, but the aggression levels and the intensity levels that you play and how fast you move that ball, you know, it's not it's not a game for it's it's not a dry ball game as such, you know, at this time of the year. But um, you know, high fitness levels and and work rate and intensity levels, if they're high, if 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 you know, if we get them to a high level, I think we're 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 direction. So hopefully we'll see that on Sunday from the girls. Thanks very much, Michael. It's great to have a chat and to look forward and look ahead to the Tesco All Ireland Minor A Championship kicking off this Sunday at 2 30 pm away to Limerick in Kamalak. And um, wish you, Michael, your management team, and all the girls the very best look for the season ahead. Lovely. Thanks, Geraldine. Great to talk to you. Bye bye. So that was Michael Firmcombe, uh, to your minor ma manager for 2022. And we wish him the very um, last weekend, speaking of minors, last weekend McCarthy Burris had a fantastic win in the minor B uh, county final, the 2021 county final over Shannon Rovers. A really exciting uh, game where the lead changed hands back and forth. Uh, in the end, uh, McCarthy uh, came out on top, winning two seven to twelve points. So a great win for McCarthy Burris last weekend, uh, adding the minor championship to their under 14 and under 16 championship already won in 2021. Next up, I spoke to Maria Davison and I chatted about her recent surgery and looking ahead to the Tipperary season. I am joined here now by Drummond Inch and Tipperary Commodity player Maria Davison. Um, Maria, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Charlie. Good to be here. Um, just uh, suppose Drummond Inch had a very interesting Munster campaign 2020 and 2021. Obviously, 2020 was, was delayed. Won that Munster final, um, beaten in the 2021 Munster final. Um, I suppose you were playing up until the start of the in semi-final and then you had to get knee surgery, is that right? Yeah, so um, usually at the start club championship last year, I think I played one game, we had Clonolty in the first round, the second match was to Mivara and my leg just didn't didn't feel right and I think from that day on it probably took nearly a month to identify what the problem was but you know I was lucky the injury, it didn't prevent me from finishing out the, the campaign so I kind of strapped up, had a few painkillers and yeah. just kind of sucked it up until, you know, I got to the All-Ireland semi and, you know, I was kind of hoping we would have maybe got to an All-Ireland and finished on a sweet note, but, you know, we, we got the Munster final that we were looking for after the, you know, losing to Scarf in 2019, so that was kind of a sweet way to end the year. Exactly, and so what, you had to go under the knife then, was it? Yeah, so I, I had a bit of um, meniscus tear and a bit of damage to my knee, so... Um, I rang in literally on the 13th of December and went under the knife on the 15th. So I'm six weeks post-op now and just off the crutches, so on the road to recovery. Very good. And what's, what's recovery look like? What rehab and physio? Or... Yeah, all physio. So um, literally just kind of maintain a muscle in, you know, building back up your quads and your hamstrings and slowly but surely getting back into, you know, maybe straight line running and things. But it's looking like maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, the end of April, start of May. So hopefully just in time to, to get back in with the girls for the, the tip campaign. Very good. And I suppose, was it hard then watching, we'll say, from in the 2021 campaign? Yeah. Not, not being, you know, you're so used to being involved and playing, but obviously you had to watch from the side. Then. Yeah, I was, but like, you know, looking at the end of, of last year's campaign, I didn't, I couldn't train with the girls. I was going spinning and I was coming watching them and that was kind of hard. And then you're talking out and you're playing the matches and it's hard on the girls then seeing you not train and you're coming along and you're starting ahead of other girls. So that kind of made the decision a little bit, um, a little bit easier, like, but yeah, it was, it was really hard, but at the end of the day, you just have to come and support the girls and, you know, they did, they did threw everything they could at Scarf and, you know, unfortunately we just came up short, but look at like, at the end of the day, it's a team sport and, you just have to be there for them and, and be proud of them for the performance that they, they gave. Very good. And obviously just during the week, uh, Bill has announced his panel for the upcoming Little Woods Art National Division 1 League. Um, you know, you're not named, uh, neither is Karen and Flo at all recovering from injuries, but mm -hmm. there's still a very strong panel named and some, some new faces. Yeah, it's good to see the, the, the new faces coming in. Um, I saw the girls playing a challenge match there at the weekend and you know, there's a lot of girls putting up the hand that, that didn't start last year, weren't even maybe on the panel. So, you know, it, it puts the pressure on the girls that had the jerseys last year. And I suppose that's what you need. You, you need more people pushing on and, and to push the girls on ahead of them as well. And, you know, we need to build our panel and, and not just, you know, the cup 16, 17 players. So 
hopefully this year now those that fresh legs coming in will will hopefully like push us on and get us over the line very good and just then um, you know when you're injured you're saying you're at challenge match there when you're injured would you still go training and then you're still part of it or? yeah um not so much this year yet um i suppose being with drum like bill is is um very considerate like he's given us the break that we need you know we've, we've been on the trot almost since 2020 so um not in any group chats kind of taking him on myself to to go into him in the gym on fridays use facilities and you know just talk linking in with the girls then and if there was challenge matches and if i was available i'd go in and see how they're getting on and stuff so it's kind of nice to not step away fully and just kind of keep in touch yeah very good and down this weekend uh saturday at 2 p.m here in county Com Com grounds right yeah. and that'll be you know it's probably a long time since we played down yeah. At the senior level, anyway, I know the, the second team would have played them. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't ever remember playing them at all. So it'll be an interesting one. It's, it's, it'll be a nice one as well to kickstart, and even here in the new grounds as well. Like I haven't seen it or even been at a match on it since it's been done up. So it'll be kind of exciting to get our league underway here as well after it being done up. Very good. Thanks very much, Maria. Thanks, Charlie. Thank Finally, um, just to say commiserations to Nakavila Dunsky Kickhams who put a fantastic performance in last weekend against Galtier in the Munster Intermediate Final. Um, they were on top for so many parts of the game. Unfortunately, uh, Galtier got that goal and really it was, was separated the two teams in the end. Nakavilla came so close to scoring goal, to score two goals of their own, but it wasn't to be. And Galtier ran out champions on a full-time score of 111 to 11 points. But I think everybody that was there and that tuned in on, to the live stream uh, would acknowledge what a fantastic performance uh, Nakavilla done ski kickings put in. And um, there will be a real uh, serious outfit up senior uh, in Tipperary this year. Now, looking ahead to this weekend, as well as the minor A championship starting on Sunday, we also have two huge games on Saturday, the start of the Littlewoods Ireland National Leagues. Uh, the Tiberi Senior Team are in action at home in the County Camogie Gr Grounds Drag in the round one of the Division One National League as Tiberi versus down. And then also on Saturday in Freshford at 2 p.m., uh, the junior side are taking, place, taking part in the Division Two League against Kilkenny. So a huge game for them. And we wish both panels and both managements the very best luck in the league campaign this year. Um, both panels were announced for the league during the week and you will see them up on our social media. And uh, the senior game, is also, as I mentioned, has been streamed and we'll have uh, Twitter updates from the Division 2 game. So that's all for this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast, episode 2 of season 2. We hope you enjoyed it.